Question number 15. Diagram 11 shows a line segment. Um, it is given that point B divides the line segment AC in the ratio of MN. So that means this ratio here is M, here is N. Okay, the ratio. Show that Y is equal to... Okay, so this one is actually the derivation, right? They want you to derive that. So since they are only giving the Y, we are only going to solve for Y. We don't have to do the X part. So if you are doing the y, I don't know whether you remember this, whenever you derive right m and n, the formula, we actually use form the triangle here. Okay, we form two triangle and then we compare. So this y here, the range, sorry, this part here, the ratio between here and here will be the same as the ratio of this and also the x over x one okay this part so this range here over this part the ratio will be equals the same as this ratio so we are only going to use the y part okay we're not going to do the x part so okay we're going to solve it here so we can let me see yeah huh? so m over n will be equal to so we form this part lah, okay here so it'll be y minus y1 over so the top so this triangle here this part will be y2 minus y okay so cross multiply you get ym minus sorry y2 minus y1 so this y2m minus ym equals to yn minus y1n okay so since we are deriving for y we are going to put all the y together so we have y2m plus y1n equals to ym plus yn okay um let me see i got space right here sorry no space uh, okay right here so now we can factorize the y out of the m and n so we have um, okay, I'm going to write like this, like NY1 plus MY2, yeah, it's easier. Then you factorize this, you get M plus N. So, in other words, Y is equals to NY1 plus MY2 over M plus N. So, that's how you derive. B, it is given that this point, okay, moves such that the distance from R is 2.5 times the distance from x axis eh, sorry y axis find the value of locus p okay so this question okay has got nothing to do with b here okay so you see huh, what they're trying to say is that you got a graph and then you got let's say this point r is going to be 3 over 2 is here let's say 3 over 2 is here and negative 1 okay negative 1 over 2 is here okay so this point r now p the locus p is what x and y right so this locus moves such that the distance from r is 2.5 times the distance from y axis so y axis is here right this whole thing is y axis so how does the locus look like the locus is going to look something like this something like this okay so that the distance between the locus and r is always going to be 2.5 times the distance from here okay from all this okay so that's what they are trying to say so this is how the locus look like so we can form our equation so pr the look the distance for pr is always going to be 2.5 times of the distance between p and the y axis so i'm just going to write so let's assume y axis means y lah, okay so p and y okay so pr we can form um x minus 3 over 2 square plus y minus negative 1 over 2 so i write plus equals to 2.5 and then square root so x minus so when it's on the y axis we know that the x value is always equal to zero right we can take any point on the 
y-axis, it will always be x equals to 0. So x minus 0 square plus. So I, you see, uh, we are finding for the distance between p and y. So p is the locus on this line, right? So at any point, the distance is going to be this, um, the y value is going to be the same. Correct? It's always going to be the same. Even if I take this point, the y value is always going to be the same. So in other words, you can write y minus y. So in other words, you will cancel it. Okay? So in the end, you get... So this square root here, I'm going to shift opposite square there. So I'm get x square here, negative 3x plus 9 over 4 plus y square plus y plus 1 over 4 equals so 2.5 when you bring the square root here opposite side so 2.5 you have to square it so when you square you should get um 25 over 4 okay that's what i got from my calculator and then inside here you have x square lah. okay so this square when i bring here it becomes a square right this whole thing becomes square so here you have to square, you get this, and then this square root you can cut with this, okay? So in the end, there is no more square root. So you only have x square. Okay, so to remove all this 4, I'm going to take the whole thing times by 4. Okay, so I get 4x square minus 12x plus 9 plus 4y square plus 4y plus 1 equals to 25x squared. Okay, so I just have to rearrange all this, x squared and x, put them together. In the end, I should get, so I'm going to bring everything to the left, uh, to the right, okay, everything to the right, so that I get a positive x squared. So I should get x21 x squared minus 4y squared and then what we have, uh, we have positive 12x minus 4y minus 10 equals to 0. So this is your answer, alright? Okay, let's see. Next, question C. So, it is given that point P, Q, R and S on a Cartesian plane. Okay, so we have P, what, P, Q, R, S. Now, the question is saying, is given that W moves such that the distance from point P and R is always equal. Okay, so we have a locus lah, okay. And if the area of quadrilateral PQRS, so PQRS, okay, so you got this quadrilateral here, the area is going to be 60. Okay, the area is going to be 60. Find the y-intercept of P, Q. Okay, so here's one thing. Since they said the distance between P and R, I mean this W from P and R is the same. So it means here is going to be the same. Here is going to be the same. So in other words, we can say that these two triangles are, are equal. They are basically equal. Now if they are equal, we can actually... How do we solve this? Because if I use this PQRS and form our... Uh, quadrilateral what is that using the formula to solve we will we will need four we will have too many unknowns because here you have one unknown because you got zero y then here the r value you have x1 y1 okay so you got too many unknowns for you to solve for just one equation so what we're going to do is since they are both equal triangle we can divide by 2. So we have 30 units here and 30 units here. Okay, so we don't need both. We only need one of these because we know this value, we know this value and we just have to find the y-intercept. Okay, that's all we want. We don't need this r. Okay, so we're going to use that to solve. So we can use the formula. <clears throat> 1 over 2. Okay, so we got 0, y, and then 2, 12, 8, 9, and 0, y, okay, don't forget to repeat it, huh? equals to 30 unit, okay, 
so bring this on the op opposite side you get becomes um, 60 here right okay wait before we do that just do this first so you get 0 plus 18 plus 8y minus 2y minus 96 minus 0 equals to you get 60 here and because you're going to shift the modulus as well so you have plus minus okay so from here 8 minus 2 we get 6y and then you get negative 80 oh wait i can't get 80 70 71 6 8 lah, 78 yeah sorry <laughs> plus minus 60 okay so now we'll have two answers first answer is 6y minus 78 equals to 60 the second one will be 6y minus 78 equals to negative 60 so 6y will be equals to 60 plus 78 138 y equals to 138 divided by 8 i will get 23 a 1 Hey, sorry, sorry. 138 by 6, I should get 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah, correct. So then here you get negative 60 plus 78. I should get 16, right? 18, sorry. Yeah, 18. So y equals to 3. Okay, so which one here is more logical? So it's based on the graph. So here you got two y value. First y value is 23, second y value is 3. So which one here will make sense? Of course, this one here cannot be 23, right? Because here is already, here is only 12. Here is only 9. Correct? 23 will be up. So here cannot be 23, it should only be 3. So the other answer here is wrong. So this is reject. You reject this. Or you ignore lah ignore okay so this is your answer y equals to 3